Hello everyone and welcome to week 16 of, of English 121. This week you're going to be reading um, about Shakespeare. We're going to be reading his most famous play, Hamlet, um, but we're also going to be learning a little bit about the theater of Shakespeare. Uh, if you read pages 1284 to 1286, it's going to tell you a little bit about the background of um, what it was like to watch a play in Shakespearean times. Um, and I'm going to provide a little background information about Shakespeare himself. Then you're going to read Hamlet, and you're also going to read a chapter, a short chapter on um, how to write about a play. This week we're going to talk about Hamlet in our conversation. Then you're going to reflect on Hamlet as well, but you're going to practice writing about a play. So who was Shakespeare? This is a question that continually haunts those who study Shakespeare. Um, his name alone has been spelled um, over 80 different ways. Um, in that time, um, spelling was not as important um, or fixed as it was as it currently is in our time. So you could spell your name 30 different ways or 80 different ways if you so chose. Um, the reality is we don't actually know Shakespeare's um, actual birthday. Um, many scholars think he was born on April 23rd, 1564 which is three days before his baptism, because they do know that his baptism was recorded in a church on Stratford, um, in Stratford, England. Um, but, and strangely enough, his death also occurred on um, April 23rd in 1616. But no one actually has any confirmation that this was the date he was born, although they do know when he died. Um, another really important fact about um, Shakespeare is that, as far as we know, he never went beyond grammar school meaning elementary school, uh, what we think of as elementary school. Much of what he um, learned after that was he was self-taught. Um, he wrote 39 plays. It's thought that he wrote 39 plays. Um, but so much, so little is known about, about Shakespeare. The more you learn about, about him, it's actually very shocking how little um, is um, actually solid evidence. Even in our book, you'll notice that um, on page 1284, there's a portrait here um, of Shakespeare, and you'll see in the caption it says, to be or not to be, is it Shakespeare? Um, this portrait was um, unearthed in 2009, um, and there's, there's actually a lot of de a debate still going on whether or not it is actually Shakespeare. Um, the family that had it believed it was Shakespeare, but um, there's, there's really no way to ever know. So I have a link here to the Folger Shakespeare Library website. Um, this, the Folger Shakespeare Library is an amazing place in Washington, D.C., where you can see um, Shakespeare's um, plays performed. Uh, but they also have a wonderful educational center that um, has information about, um, about the plays and about Shakespeare's life. So I encourage you to visit this page and read their um, biography about Shakespeare. So this week we're reading a play called Hamlet. Many of you may have been exposed to this play before, and there are so many adaptations of Hamlet, it's uncanny. Even uh, if you've ever seen The Lion King, that's kind of based on um, Hamlet. So, um, uh, but before you, before you um, participate in um, our conversation this week, I'd like you to read Hamlet. I'd also like you to watch all of these three versions I have below here of the famous soliloquy, To Be or Not To Be. Um, which is found in Act um, in Act One, pages uh, 51 through um, sorry, uh, lines 50, 57 through 91. Um, what is Hamlet contemplating in this famous soliloquy? How does he resolve his internal argument? How do you how do each of these actors express Hamlet's feelings differently? What remains the same in each actor's performance? Which performance do you like the best, and why? Do you agree with your peers or not, and why? Um, so, as always, please post your initial post by Saturday at 11.59 p.m. for full credit. Um, and please enjoy this. This is a fun soliloquy to watch. They're very, very different expressions of this very famous speech. Uh, finally, in your reflection journal this week, I'd like you to write about Hamlet. I'd like you to answer the following questions using examples from the text to support what you're saying. What is Hamlet based upon? Does it lessen Shakespeare's work that he based his play on one that had already been written? What is the play's major dramatic question? At what point in the play is the question formulated? Does this play have a crisis or a turning point? 
How is Hamlet shown to be a noble and extraordinary person, not merely by birth, but by nature? See Ophelia's praise of Hamlet as the glass of fashion and the mold of form. Are we to take Ophelia's speech as the prejudiced view of a lover, or does Shakespeare demonstrate that her opinion of Hamlet is trustworthy? Finally, what part of the play do you feel is most powerful and why? Use quotations from the text to support what you are saying. Yes, I am trying to get you to practice using quotations from a play. See pages, see page 1963 for details on how to cite a play correctly. All right, guys, um, that's it. This slide is not correct. I will correct it before I post the uh, PDFs of the slides. Next week is our last week and we will be um, doing a review session. Um, the, the lecture will be a review section, um, session. Um, and then um, we will be having a final exam. More details about it next week. Um, as I posted in uh, this week's um, notes, uh, you guys are all doing an amazing job. I'm very, very happy to be teaching this course and you have, all your hard work has really made it fun to teach. So keep up the good work and um, I look forward to seeing you guys online.